Tis the season to start decking the house. As your show grows, so does the time it takes to set it up. I'm going to take you on a quick tour of our setup. We'll highlight some of the failures as well as some of the successes and hope you get some ideas for your setup. The key thing to remember is don't fall off your ladder. Let's go. We're going to start off the setup with checking your bulbs. As much as it's a pain to set up inside your house, it's better to do a quick checkup on your bulbs before you hang them up on your house or put them out in your yard. All of my controllers are WLED controllers and can be tested by connecting directly using my phone. From there, I choose a solid pattern of red. Visually, I scan all the pixels to make sure none of them are out. I then repeat the process for the green and the blue pixels. After checking the solids, I run the BPM and flow patterns to see if there are any flickering issues I can address early on. Unfortunately, this year I had one bulb on a frame near the end that had a green pixel out. I tried to repair the bulb, and the bulb before it, with a bulb from a different batch of lights three times. Each time, the bulbs behind the new bulb blinked randomly and failed on the solid tests. I finally had to replace the bulb with the bulbs at the end of the frame. Because these were bulbs from the same batch, they worked without issue. I purchased those bulbs from Ray Wu back in 2020. Those pixels were solid for the most part. I then purchased a larger batch from Ray in 2021 and had problems with the entire batch. I reached out to the company and wasn't able to get satisfaction. When the voltage drops slightly below 5 volts, the bulb starts to blink. I'm not sure if this is an ongoing issue with Ray, but buyer beware. We built the roof line and the window frames with vinyl J-channel. We talked about this in an earlier video, but we used a drill press to space the bullets every two inches. I purchased an 11 millimeter drill bit, which is just enough clearance for the bullet pixels to hold snugly without them having to constantly fall out. The J-channel was then secured to the fascia using stainless steel screws. Zinc screws eventually corrode over time, so I decided to spring for the stainless steel. I also chose to surround the drill points with silicon. The roof is divided into three sections. Each section is driven off of a separate port on a single WT32 ETH01 board that resides inside the garage in there. The first section is the garage section, which starts over here in the corner and loops over this peak and makes its way to the left. The second section goes up a little higher, starts there in the corner, and follows the main roof line going over this peak right here, and then continuing its way all the way to the end. And the last section is that third peak up there. One other thing I'd like to mention is that while testing my box for my roof line this year, the Chinese power supply I used failed. I also replaced the controller to be safe. This was the second power supply that failed from my roof line. Luckily, I had a spare box with a Meanwell supply. The box only had two outputs, so I had to jury rig it to get the third output. So far, for all the shows that I've had, all of my Meanwells have held up every season. Here's the details about our roof line. The roof line is controlled with one WT32 ETH01 controller. The controller has three pin outputs, one output for each of the sections of the roof line it controls. It has one 60 amp, five volt Meanwell power supply and it controls a total of 599 five volt bullet pixels. Let's cover the data routes for each of the three sections of roof line. The first roof line is the garage roof line. It goes from the box inside the garage up to the fascia and then follows left through the lights on the outside first peak. The second line goes up through the garage attic to the fascia and then follows along to the right across the length of the house over to the end. And thirdly, the final data line goes up through the attic, through the fascia, then back in through the top attic, and then out through that third peak there. The roof line is 5 volts, and 5 volt pixels are very power hungry, so we have a secondary wire that runs parallel to all the lights that will inject every 100 pixels, and also at the end. If I don't do this, the voltage will drop, and you'll start to see flickering and fading of the lights. So we inject every 100 pixels, and at the ends to make sure that we don't see that in our roof line. The big matrix is new this year. Our 884 pixel matrix has been with us 
for our first show and has been the main focal point. You can see that here off to the right. However, a 34 by 26 pixel matrix is low resolution and it's using a sketchy batch of five volt pixels from Ray Wu. This year, I decided to try a 12 volt matrix of 2,365 pixels. I purchased the lights from Wired Watts and while more pricey than Ray, they worked out really well. All the pixels are really heavy and holding it on the ladder while securing it to the window was a struggle. While I am securing the top of the matrix to the window using zinc eye hooks, I'm resting the bottom of the matrix on the ledge to help distribute the weight. The smaller matrix hangs on the window over the main door. Like the screws from before, we use silicon to waterproof the holes. The light we use in the house at night can be distracting, so we take measures to block the light inside. The small window behind the matrix has black foam board duct taped together since there are no curtains. The other window uses heavy drape curtains. This is the wiring for our big matrix. We have one WT32 ETH01 controller. We also have three pin outputs. We also have three 40 amp 12 volt meanwhile power supplies. We also have one 5 amp 5 volt power supply that powers just the microcontroller. And lastly, we have 2,365 12 volt bullet pitches in the matrix altogether. This setup is slightly different than our other prop setups because we wanted to keep the board as close as possible because data travels better through ethernet. We extend the ethernet data directly to the board right next to the matrix. We then have a five volt power supply that powers the microcontroller. From there, the board controls three different sections on three different ports. Port one controls the bottom, two the middle, and three the top. So the one microcontroller is controlling three different sections of the matrix. We then have to power our LEDs. We have three power supplies down at the bottom. The first power supply powers the first third of the matrix. The second power supply powers the second. And lastly, the third powers the third. Next up are the window outline frames. The frames all consist of five bullet pixels chained together. A power injection line runs parallel to the lights in order to provide power for every 100 pixels. The frames are also made out of J-channel like the roof line. I had difficulty drilling parallel holes into the PVC and keeping the holes straight. While they do work and match the house color, a PVC frame would have been sturdier. Each connection between the frames uses a cheap waterproof connector called a MUI connector. While these connections are useful to separate the frames, I should have stuck with the Rei Wu connectors, or even used X connect connectors. The MUI connectors saved me about 50 cents per connection, but they crushed easily and they fall out constantly. My recommendation would be to spend the extra 50 cents per connector and pass on the MUI. Let's cover the details for the windows and the matrix. We have one WT32ETH01 controller that controls three different sections of our house. It has two 60 amp 5 volt mean well power supplies and the total amount of pixels on the house box is 1914. Let's go over how the data gets to the box. The data goes to a switch in the middle of the yard and the ethernet data comes straight up across the ground into a box behind this bush. From there, we want to route the first section, which is our right hand side. The data flows up and over the door it then connects to the first window at the lower left hand side and follows around clockwise. Same thing for the next window, goes around clockwise. Then it goes up to the third window, again clockwise and finally all the way over to the final window. The power injection line is very similar. It's another wire that follows the path, but it can go a shorter distance. It goes over the door and then across here and intersects every 100 pixels so it doesn't have to worry about traveling a far distance. Now, Covering the left-hand side, it follows a similar pattern. We go to the bottom one first and around. It's kind of a reverse of the other side. Then the data line goes straight up to the top one, up and around. And this is where it gets kind of difficult because there's a lot of distance to cover between this second window and the third window. So the data line follows along here and goes over to the third window, up and around. And then finally, the data connects to the fourth window, up and around. The power injection line is similar, but it takes a, a shorter path. We can inject the power right to the corner and up to this corner and we don't have to make it snake back around like the data line is we can actually T right off there and inject to these two lines straight from that injection point finally we have the matrix the data line goes up to the lower left hand corner 
And then the data follows a serpentine pattern up to control the entire matrix. There's only one uh, data line that we need here. However, the power is slightly different. The first third of the matrix is powered by the same cable that brought the data. We also then have two additional power injection lines that go straight and power the second and also power the third section of the matrix. Once the house is done, it's time to knock out the yard props. The alien trees are straightforward to set up. Space them out in the yard, matching the X-Lights layout. At each spot, pound a two-foot section of rebar one foot into the ground so one foot is still standing up. Since I'm mounting the trees on a hill, I use a level to make sure that the rebar points straight up. Once the aliens are in, I pound an additional rebar behind the third alien and mount an electrical box on PVC. From there, I hook a security guy wire up to the tree and attach each of the aliens to it. This will hopefully discourage thieves from walking off with them. I also secure each alien to the ground with a rebar candy cane. If you want to know more about how we made the aliens, check out the detailed build video later. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Let's cover the details for the alien trees. We have one WT32ETH01 controller. It has two pin outputs. We have one 60 amp 5 volt meanwhile power supply. And the total number of bullets it controls is 1,164 5 volt bullet pixels. The ethernet starts behind the tree. From there, that particular box sends the data and power down to the first alien and along to the left hand side. It injects every 100 pixels and the same chain of events happens to the right hand side, chaining between the three aliens to the right. Finally, we tie a bow on this setup with the driveway arches. I was a little short on rebar this year, so I had to cut a few more four foot pieces. If you're interested on saving money by cutting your own rebar, I put together a more detailed video. Check that out when you're done with this one. I pound four foot pieces of rebar about two feet into the ground on either side of the driveway to secure the arches. The arches are higher up in the air and they're subject to wind, so I wanted to make sure they were fully secure into the ground. From there, I attach two 10 foot PVC arches with a PVC join and slide them over the rebar. After that, I get my wife to help me zip tie the lights to the arches. Finally, we have the arches. It's controlled by one microcontroller. The controller has two different outputs. One controls the first three at the bottom of the driveway, and the, the second controls the three at the top. We have one 60 amp, five volt meanwhile power supply powering the entire setup. It has 725 volt bullet pixels. The data is unique. The first data line goes from the box over to the first arch and follows this pattern, looping back and forth over the arches. And the other arches follow the same pattern, looping back and connecting. The power does something similar, but it only has to arch over the first arch. And then from there, the power line is run perpendicularly across either side, injecting at either end of the arch. I hope you're able to get some ideas for your show. Hopefully you can avoid some of the pitfalls I had when building it. If you have some creative ideas for your show, or you saw something I can improve upon, please drop a line below in the details. Also, if you want more insight on new features that come out for your home lighting hobbies, remember to subscribe and drop a like. Thanks for joining us here at Bites of Pie and have a great holiday season.